Well, to discuss Germany's popularity and America's lack thereof, I'm joined tonight by Thomas Kleine-Brockhoff. He is vice president of the German Marshall Fund of the United States. Thomas is here in Berlin tonight. Thomas, it's good to see you. Welcome to the day. Let's start with Trump's America. Um, it has not done well in this Gallup poll since Trump became U.S. president. However, the image of the U.S. was slightly worse in this poll when George W. Bush was president. So would the picture look better with Joe Biden in the White House? These numbers always track the popularity uh, of the president abroad, of whatever U.S. president it is. Uh, therefore, there was an uptick with, uh, with Obama and remarkable market uptick uh, and and it plummeted uh, under uh, Donald Trump so the expectation would be that there would be a relief factor uh, if Joe Biden were to become president we know that Europe and much of the world are looking at the United States and are shocked by the coronavirus crisis in America what role does this public health disaster play in America's image decline I think it does play a role in, in two ways one if you had had a study um, about who would be well prepared for weathering a pandemic you would have looked to countries like the United States uh, to be able to weather such a storm state capacity uh, science uh, resources would be factors that would be weighed and you would conclude that the United States would be able to weather uh, such a storm better than others. But what we see now is that these factors don't really uh, work in their favor because political polarization, um, civic unrest, instable and uneven leadership uh, play a role when you need to huddle and unite in order to uh, to battle such a, such a pandemic. And I think I think the fact, and that is the second point here, uh, that the United States is unable to do that and doesn't have the stability and the even keel leadership that is necessary in such a moment does indeed contribute mm. uh, uh, to the decline in popularity around uh, around the world. And if the United States is the worst performer in this pandemic, you, you could say that Germany is one of the best uh, performers. And that is, it's commanding admiration and respect around the world, isn't it? Well, it, it's a sign of stability. It's uh, multiple factors. As a citizen of this country in the, in the past few months, I felt I, I lived in the country I wanted to live in because it, it had a, a combination of factors that contributed. Uh, there was uh, a, a civic spirit that, that I found. There was also capacity, science, ingenuity, and even in a federal system with multiple sources of power, um, there was stable leadership. Yes, Angela Merkel contributed. Uh, to it, but the, she was the conductor of an orchestra rather than a strong leader. She didn't have all the powers at the federal level. So while it looks from the outside as if there is a macro factor, from the inside it, it looks like a pretty stable, pretty well functioning system. By the way, this has not been a good time for populists because the populist narrative essentially collapsed during uh, the uh, during uh, the pandemic. Uh, the, the elites, the state, state functioned well. And that was certainly the case here. And it did transpire across, uh, across Germany's border. But certainly Germany is not the only country uh, that, that, that weathered the storm well. But among the bigger countries, it's one of the better performers. Mm -hmm. Well, then tell me what happens next year when Angela Merkel steps down and is no longer German chancellor. And add to that... If Donald Trump is no longer U.S. president, what are we going to see in terms of global leadership tr transatlantic? 
in, in terms of polling like this, my expectation would be that a, at a, that a medium-sized country as Germany would be in a, in a relatively stable position. The numbers we, uh, we see haven't changed very much during the past years. While others have gone down, Germany's numbers have stayed stable. It's, it's, it's a well-known, well-respected country, but it's a non-threatening country. It doesn't have military power. It doesn't enforce things. So it's easy to be popular. It's much harder to be popular when you're the world's, uh, uh, when you're the world's superpower. Uh, then people are affected by power. And that's, I think, what we see uh, uh, during this Trump presidency uh, when America is wielding its power, also its verbal and diplomatic mm. power. You have some that law will change with new leadership in, on both sides of, uh, of the Atlantic, and therefore I would expect such numbers to change. You know that there are some German lawmakers, including the German foreign minister, who have said that there can be no going back to the world order as it was before Trumpism. Uh, do you agree? We've got about 30 seconds, Thomas. Do you agree? Uh, yes and no. Uh, you can't go back because too many things have happened, but that shall not mean that there is no difference between Joe Biden and, uh, and Donald Trump. If Biden were to be elected, there would be multiple opportunities to repair things, and, and uh, European politicians in my view, would be well advised to think now how that could be done. And before I let you go, is there a possibility that Angela Merkel can be talked into, can be convinced to stay one more term as German chancellor? Do you see that happening? I, I, I hope it doesn't happen. I'm, the, the Republic needs change. Uh, and much as, as she's respected, she also will need to end her tenure. We're a democracy and want to remain one. Okay. Thomas Kleinebrockhoff, Vice President of the German Marshall Fund of the United States. Thomas, it was good to have you on the show. We appreciate your time and your insights tonight. Thank you. Thank you.